Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jane Welch, and I'm your community leader for this Mass. We welcome everyone to our celebration, and thank you for joining us. Our guidelines require that your mask cover your mouth and your nose throughout the entire Mass. There will be no contact during the sign of peace, but please acknowledge each other's presence at this celebration. Thank you. Please stand and welcome our pastor, Father Jerry Hurley. Let's join together as sing, sing to the mountain.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, may the grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Thank you, and uh, welcome to our celebration. Glad you could be here with us. Glad that those of you are joining us from home via live stream. We continue to pray and ask the Lord to pour out his blessings upon us in this time of great challenge and upheaval and so many events taking place in our world. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, and therefore I ask the Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Let us pray. O God, who gave the priest St. Jerome a living and tender love for the sacred scripture, grant that your people may ever more faithfully nourish by your word and be more faithfully nourished by your word and find in it the fount of life through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Job. Job answered his friends and said, I know well that it is so, but how can a man be justified before God? Should one wish to contend with him, he could not answer him once in a thousand times. God is wise in heart and mighty in strength, who has withstood him and remained unscathed. He removes the mountains before they know it. He overturns them in his anger. He shakes the earth out of its place, and the pillars beneath it tremble. He commands the sun, and it rises not. He seals up the stars. He alone stretches out the heavens and treads upon the crest of the sea. He made the bear and the Orion, the Pleiades, and the constellations of the south. He does great things, past finding out, marvelous things beyond reckoning. Should he come near me, I see him not. Should he pass by, I am not aware of him. Should he seize me forcibly, who can say him nay? Who can say to him, what are you doing? How much less shall I give him any answer or choose out arguments against him? Even though I were right, I could not answer him, but should rather beg for what was due me. If I appealed to him and he answered my call, I could not believe that he would hearken to my words. The word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm. Let my prayer come before you, Lord. Let my prayer come before you, Lord. Daily I call upon you, O Lord. To you I stretch out my hands. Will you work wonders for the dead? Will the shades arise to give you thanks? Let my prayer come before you, Lord. Do they declare your mercy in the grave, your faithfulness among those who have perished? Are your wonders made known in the darkness or your justice in the land of oblivion? Let my prayer come before you, Lord. But I, O Lord, cry out to you. With my morning prayer, I wait upon you. Why, O Lord, do you reject me? Why hide from me your face? 
Let my prayer come before you, Lord. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. As Jesus and his disciples were proceeding on their journey, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus answered him, Foxes have dens and birds of the sky have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. And another said, to another he said, follow me. But he replied, Lord, let me go first and bury my father. But he answered, let the dead bury their dead. But you go and proclaim the kingdom of God. And another said, I will follow you, Lord, but first let me say farewell to my family at home. Jesus answered him, no one who sets his hand to the plow and continues to look back um, is fit for the kingdom of God, the gospel of the Lord. Very challenging words of the gospel indeed. We read from the book of Job, and Job struggling in the first reading, and uh, attempting to turn it all over and say, well, look at God and his marvelous creation. Everything is ordered by him. We bring disorder, not God. Um, so why would I question God? Why would I question him, even though I've had a lot of misfortune? And it certainly is an appropriate reflection at this time. Uh, in these days of the COVID, in these days of the struggles throughout our country, why would I question God? The objective Job is saying is to come into harmony in relationship with God, not to question whether he is doing right or wrong, because he says, we don't know. We do not have the expansiveness to know and understand that. The gospel, knowing him, is being devout and following him. Jesus um, invites these people to follow and one says to him, hey, I'll follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said, well, le let's see if you will. Another says, when invited by Jesus, well, let me go and bury my father first. Sounds like a very noble thing. And Jesus' response sounds very strange to us. But the point Jesus is making is there's always good excuses very good excuses for not taking on the mantle of really following him. Burying the dead, um, going and taking leave of family. But people do it all of the time. And what Jesus is saying is, hey, if you put me first, I promise you, all these other things will find their place. Celebrate the Feast of St. Jerome, uh, just the most highly regarded in terms of uh, scripture and understanding and interpretation of scripture. The, the Jerome biblical commentary is just the greatest commentary period in the uh, history of biblical studies. Uh, an interesting individual, he was born in uh, Dalmatia, which is present day uh, Yugoslavia, back in around 340. And he studied in Rome and uh, later was baptized there. And then he took an interest in monasticism in the East, in Germany, and uh, joined a community there. Um, he was uh, ordained a priest, but he had difficulty getting along with the monks. He was noted for being uh, pretty uh, stout, argumentative, and uh, disagreeable. 
And maybe that's what made him so uh, persistent in this experience, you know. Uh, many wrote about him, hey, being angry and distressed and fighting and arguing his particular perspectives. But he uh, produced the Vulgate, which is the uh, form of the, the Bible, the translation into the Latin as we knew it, which became a huge gift to the church, the uh, full translation of the Old and the New Testament scriptures. He was uh, uh, quite an eccentric, you know. He, um, he went and lived in a cave in Bethlehem when he uh, translated much of this and studied there, you know. And then when he came out, he'd have disagreements with some folks and moved back to being an ascetic again. He became the uh, secretary to the Pope in Rome for a little while, Pope Damasus. Uh, and during that period, that's when he really got into the scriptures and became more and more an ascetic, uh, going out and really trying to hear God and trying to be responsive to him. So he took the scriptures and really devoured them and brought them to life for us as we know them today. Um, he had that expression, uh, Ignorance of Scripture is ignorance of Christ. What a significant thought. St. Augustine said of him uh, in that same time period, if uh, Jerome doesn't know it, then it hasn't been known in our world. He had such a regard for him and uh, such a regard for his intellect and his knowledge and his ability. So we're celebrating one of the great doctors of the church and a doctor because the profound influence that he had on bringing the scriptures to life for us. So today we celebrate him and we celebrate and ask the Lord to uh, give us some of that zeal that he had for the proclamation of the good news. Lord, we ask you to hear our prayers and our petitions, which we now place before you. Please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, that the Holy Spirit may bind us with the same love, uniting us in heart, so that we may carry out God's will in the world today. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our leaders, that they may have the courage to do what is right and just, even when it is not easy or popular. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For missionaries who spread the good news through word and action, that they may be kept safe from harm, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all people who have experienced any type of illness, hardship, stress, loss of income, or loss of a loved one due to the coronavirus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may humbly regard others as more important than ourselves, looking out for their interests and becoming the face of Christ for our neighbor. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of our faithful departed brothers and sisters who have died in the hope of rising again, especially John Reese, for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all who are sick in our parish community, all who are suffering from any kind of ailment of mind or body, we pray that the Lord will bless them in these days and continue to renew their hope and strength, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, all of these, our prayers we bring to you, we ask that you accept them and grant them, for we offer them a faith in Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread we offer you, the work of human hands it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine we offer you fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that this sacrifice of ours may be acceptable to God, who is our Almighty Father. Grant us, O Lord, that having meditated on your word, following the example of St. Jerome, we may more eagerly draw near to offer your majesty the sacrifice of salvation through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. And so we join the angels and saints in proclaiming your glory as we say, Holy Holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew falls that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, he broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which shall be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. And therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, and all of your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with the Apostles, and with all of the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For it is through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. 
And now we pray for the coming of the kingdom as Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always freed from sin and safe from all distress as we await in blessed hope the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Thank you, and let us be aware of that peace and acknowledge that peace to one another. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. May these holy gifts we have received, O Lord, as we rejoice in celebrating St. Jerome, stir up the hearts of your faithful so that, attentive to sacred teachings, they may understand the path they are to follow, and by following it obtain life everlasting through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God continue to bless us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended, and we go now in peace to love and to serve God and each other. Just a couple of announcements. If you have not received a St. Paul e-bulletin, please go online to the St. Paul website to register your email address. This coming weekend, October 3rd and 4th, we will have a second collection for the Holy Lands. Please drop your gift in the collection basket or mail it to the church office. An adoration will follow immediately after Mass. Please be seated or kneel if you are staying for adoration. If you will be leaving, please remain standing and wait to be dismissed from your pew. Please maintain social distancing as you exit the building. Thank you. And we say our prayer. Right. Here is my promise, Lord. I commit to look for Amen. Thank you all for being with us and uh, 
David will release you all now, I think, right? Let me give you the talent. Let's join together as we sing in Christ alone. Yes. 
Sunday, 